How's it going today guys? Welcome to another Timberline Productions video. Today in this video series on MIDI controllers, I'm going over this expander switch for the DMC-6D. And what this is, is this just gives you some more functionality over your DMC-6D. And it's a little bit, it gives you more flexibility as well because it can be placed anywhere on the board. It doesn't have to be contained on the one big unit and make it larger. And that's what I really like about this unit is these three TRS jacks allow for more expansion. Like these two can be uh, expression pedals if I ever decide I wanna add an expression pedal to this setup or my looper control. So next video is going to be on how to use the looper with this pedal, but today we're just gonna be going over the expander switch. So what the expander switch is, is it adds two different feet, two, di two extra buttons to it that have extra features on them. This one is gonna be your tap tempo and your hold button and then this one is gonna be a favorite setting. We'll go over what the favorite setting is first because I actually really, really like it and I find it super helpful. So say for example, you're way more complicated than I am and you have a page set up, uh, a bank set up on 23 and you want to be able to go to just a quickly recalled setting. And that, can, and that setting can be engaged at any time on any of the banks. You don't have to go all the way back, go away from 23 to four and engage a button. You can just hit it and it goes right to a designated saved preset that works on any single page uh, on any bank. It's like having a fifth one of these presets and you don't have to be in a specific bank to access it. So um, the way you set it up is it's gonna be, so right there, it says favorite and that will, will show up as FA or FAV on the single digit ones. And that shows up no matter what bank you're on. So it, no matter what bank you're on, when this is engaged, you have your favorite and then hit it again, your bypass. So how you set it up is you're gonna hold down just like you would set up a preset on any of these four originally when you're in your bank mode. And this is what gives you the option to go in and edit it. Um, I don't wanna mess with this too much because I actually have a favorite sound. Uh, so well, I, like, I like my tank, tank spring reverb. Oh, no, nope, that's not it. Tank spring reverb, uh, my tape delay and bypassed on the M5. So this one is the bypass command as well. Um, because I was, as I explained in a previous video, the M5 doesn't like to receive bypassed commands when you disengage out of a preset, I had to make a page that was just a noise gate with the threshold all the way down and it bypassed over here. So that way I could have a bypassed setting on here. So this also acts as a panic button if I'm on a preset and I change to something else and the M5 doesn't want to cooperate. So I hit that as well, and that's going to uh, disengage the M5. It's like a panic button for me. So once you get whatever your favorite is set up, just like holding one of these down would save, you're gonna hold down the favorite button. You'll see save. And you're in 19D. You wanna go back to your favorite setting, no matter what page you're on, hit it, and there you go. So that's how to set up the favorites on the expander switch. Now let's talk about this switch, because this one has a dual purpose. Uh, first, we'll jump out of there. So what this one is, is, and it can be different on every single expander switch. You can have them uh, raised up at an angle like I have here, uh, or them be the same height. I just have them at different heights so that way I know which one's which and if I ever place it uh, vertical like that, then it's a little bit easier to access both buttons. So. What this is, is this is the tap tempo on MIDI channels one and four. Four, one and four, don't know why that was a problem. Um, so that sends a tap tempo to MIDI channel four. MIDI channel four is kind of weird on this and you would probably only use that with like the Eventide H9 or if you only had the, the M5 and you just wanted to quickly be able to get through all the different presets the M5 had, that's what you would use MIDI channel four uh, for. So on number one, it's just gonna send a tap tempo and it would if I had this on MIDI channel four as well. So that's really helpful to have it all, to have it be down here. I don't have to tap in up here. I don't have run the risk of bumping into this button. That's why this one kind of gets its own isolated area. You can just tap it in and there we go. The reason it doesn't send a tap signal, oh wait, no, it does send a MIDI uh, tap signal to number two as well, to MIDI channel two, but it's for whatever reason specific to the Strymon devices. So if I had the Mobius, here, then it would also affect the speed of the modulation on the Mobius. The reason it doesn't send a tap tempo signal 
to MIDI channel three is tap tempo on a big sky affects the decay knob. It, it sets the time frame at which your reverb is gonna delay. So for whatever reason, disaster area felt like that was more of a hindrance than it was uh, helpful. If you wanted to have that tap control over your decay time, you would just change your big sky to MIDI channel one or two. So that's how you would get that functionality on the big sky. And what this also does is if you have like say a larger reverb on a big sky and you wanna freeze that reverb, holding it down whatever preset is engaged will infinitely sustain that reverb sound for as long as you have this held down. Now, I used that a lot when I, even before I had this MIDI controller, but it was a hindrance because I had to hold my foot always on the engaged preset. I couldn't ever lift my foot up to do something else because then it would just decay. So what they did here is you hold this, and it's not a very long hold, and it's going to freeze that reverb on the big sky if you have it set up on that one specific preset. So that's super helpful. I don't have to keep holding down the tap button in order for it to hold that sustain. If I want to disengage it, I just real quick hold this again. There it went, it went away. So that is extremely helpful for those of you guys like me who do a little bit more ambient stuff or maybe worship guitar type stuff where you have to have a pad sitting underneath. This is super helpful. So if you're gonna get the DMC-6D, I highly, highly recommend that you get the expander switch as well because it's super helpful. Helpful. It way expands the functionality of this as a MIDI controller in general, and I don't think it's that much more expensive as well. And it, it'll come with a TRS cable. Uh, this one is just one I had lying around. Nope, this is the one that came with it. And you can get it in a custom color or, or enclosure or whatever. So this one's just in the orange sparkle because that's what I bought it with secondhand. So that gives you guys a good idea on the expander switch. Uh, love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, the next video is gonna come. Uh, gonna be coming over on how to do the looper control just on this one device itself. That does not require the expander switch. But that video is next, so go check that out. Thank you guys so much and have a good